Hey guys, Robin here, and welcome to another movie review. <clears throat> now, as you may have now, um, now, like I said in, in my previous video, um, I may, um, <clears throat> I have reviewed the movie Duel in Maximum Overdrive, but so yeah, I got copy of Maximum Overdrive right here. Now, as you may or may not know. Maximum Overdrive uh, was based on on a short story by Stephen King called Trucks, and um, Maximum Overdrive built on the events of the book by having um, like by having like electrical appliances and like in one scene even uh, even uh lawn sprinklers were under control but what you may not know is that the short story trucks got a second adaptation that was more faithful and that became and that is the 1997 made for tv movie simply called trucks <clears throat> now these are now these are both horror movies but they're two like different types of movies now. Maximum Overdrive is a very campy and silly movie, but it's not very scary. Trucks, uh, trucks though not as exciting. Um, <clears throat> it is. <clears throat> there are a, there are like there are a couple scenes that are incredibly silly. But for the most part, this movie is a lot scarier than Maximum Overdrive is. Now, um, <clears throat> now, uh, this movie stars Timothy Busfield, probably saying that wrong, as well as Brenda Bakke, Adam Devine, Brendan Fletcher, and Jay Brazeau. <clears throat> Who is in another movie I own, Slam Dunk Ernest? Know what I mean by him? Anyways, um, <clears throat> now Timothy Busfield character, um, used to live in Detroit, but after his wife was accidentally killed during a drive-by gang shooting, he moved he and his son to a place in Nevada. Outside of Area 51. Now, it's never... Now, now in Maximum Overdrive, where the reason for the trucks rising up is either a comet and or aliens. In trucks, a very... Two... Um, a couple of uh, possibilities are mentioned, but neither one is hammered in. Because one of the characters, Thad, used to be a pilot that flew helicopters in and out of Area 51, but he says it's strictly military. However, two of the redneck truckers think that he, he actually does know what's going on. But, um, but aside from that, it's not only um, a bunch, but it's not only four sentient semi trucks they have to deal with. Although it's really only more like one semi truck, which is a Western Star, of which Maximum Mobile would have also had one, right there on the cover. <clears throat> and there's a 1980 Ford F Series dump, well, kind of a flatbed tow truck. And then there's a 1980 GMC dump truck. And then there's a 73 Ford F700 cherry picker bucket truck. <clears throat> but. But whereas Maximum Overdrive had like like appliances and guns and and sold machines and arcade games and and, and gasoline pumps um, in trucks only trucks are affected, <clears throat> including some light duty vehicles or to the average person ordinary pickup trucks. Now, only two uh, pickup trucks ever come alive, and they're both really, and they're both, um, 
much older trucks, like the first truck that comes alive in the movie is a 1947 GMC new design that is missing the passenger side door, and it kills the owner of, of the junkyard by crashing through the side of his shack and killing him while he's in the shower. A little bit of a psycho reference there. In fact, um, now there are a couple references to other Stephen King movies. Um, there are two references to The Shining, although one of them may be unintentional. Because in one of the two incredibly silly scenes, there are these two guys driving a hazmat truck because um, because a truck we see come alive, a Freightliner FOA cab over truck. Um, well, first of all, um, unlike in Maximum Overdrive, this movie actually shows like what happens when a truck becomes alive while it's being operated. It, 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 it just starts swerving all over the road. Anyhow, um, this truck, which is, which is carrying, like, a, uh, this truck, okay, which is carrying, like, a toxic chemical, it comes alive, crashes into a power station, there's, there's a huge explosion, and there's black smoke. Now, it's called, like, I'm not sure what it's called, but it's B and then three numbers. Now, um, the official news report is that it's some kind of glue used for rockets, but according to the two hazmat guys, it's some, like, chemical warfare stuff that they aren't supposed to be making anymore. And, um, so, um, they decided to, like, suit up. The one guy gets suited up, but the truck, um, these suits are inflated by an air suit, by, like, an air, kind of like a reverse vacuum that inflates the suit full of air. The truck inflates the spare suit for the other guy. And by the way, um, the the first person, the, the first person that leaves the truck is a black guy. And the truck inflates the suit. It takes control of the suit, makes it grab an axe, and kills the truck and kills the guy driving the van, who looks a lot like Rip Torn. I'll get into more celebrity with them one says, and, um, the black guy who was in his containment shoes, like, hey, hey, that was quick. How, how did you get your suit on? Why are you covered in blood? Did you cut yourself? <clears throat> and the suit, being controlled by the truck, hits the guy in the chest with the axe, exactly where, exactly where Scatman Carruthers received an axe in The Shining, although that may just be more of a coincidence. And, um, the other one is, um, well, there, there is some, some newlyweds, <clears throat> and one of them, the, the male, the, the, the man, he apparently has the, um, IQ, <clears throat> he apparently has the IQ of an egg salad, because he finds a non-running pickup in a garage, which is a 59 Chevy Apache, and he decided to fix it up. And as soon as he finished the fence, the truck pinned him against the door of the garage, which is held shut by a plank of wood between the handles, and it crushed him, him to death. <clears throat> and um, his wife grabbed an axe and starts hitting the truck, calling with the axe, calling it a murderer. And then she is dragged to the area where, where the rest of the people are. And then she just given a sedative, and she's never really seen again until people notice she's missing, and she's kind of walking on the trail on a hill above, and she gets killed by the, uh, 73 Ford, Ford bucket truck. And, um, now, um, celebrity resemblance is, um, Timothy Busfield character's son, Logan, looks a lot like Andrew Michael Hall, and the character of Thad, which, by the way, the guy playing him does not know how to act, like, at all. It's just the most deadpan delivery, and he looks like John Cena. And, uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Now, unfortunately, the, the, the 59 Chevy and the GMC pickup don't survive the film. Because the 47 GMC is accidentally uh, hit by the Western Star Truck. <clears throat> and after 
the 59 Chevy kills the guy. It gets rammed by the bucket truck which is trying to kill the, the wife and Tim character and Timothy's character. And it's just basically uh, smashed it into the truck, it into three pieces. <clears throat> but like in maximum roll overdrive, um, passenger cars, the, such as the Honeymooners 1980 Buick, Timothy's Chevy 79 Chevy Malibu wagon, which by the way, maximum number overdrive also featured a Chevy Malibu, <clears throat> as well as um, his co worker's uh, minivan never comes alive either. And uh, now, I, I did say the movie was scarier than maximum number overdrive is, and that's like at one point um, after. After the husband of the newlywed couple was killed, Thad's daughter, who was trapped in another building with Logan and the two honeymooners, she, she makes a run for the drainage pipe and Logan goes after her. And the dump truck, the dump truck, uh, blocks off the end where they went in by dumping its load. And the bucket truck traps them by, by backing up. So that its exhaust pipe is like, <clears throat> it's just belching fumes into the pipe to suffocate them, which is, which actually is pretty scary. Also, the Sherry Picker truck seems to be the one that gets the most kills. And, uh, <clears throat> and yeah, so, um, yeah. Oh, um, the other ridiculous scene, I am not even freaking kidding you. Okay, um, now, now before I get in, into this scene, um, now, I need to specify all kinds of trucks come alive, okay? <clears throat> okay, um, there's the heavy-duty semis, as I may have mentioned, um, the medium do the medium duty chassis cab trucks, the light duty pickups, and one unfortunate but incredibly dumb postal worker, not even kidding, is killed by one of these. No, not a dump truck, an actual toy truck kills a person in this movie. And uh yeah, it's just I mean I mean it's just, I'm just watching it like it's a freaking toy, just like punch it across the road or something. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, it's just, I mean, it's, it's crazy, I mean, yeah. There is, um, another scene, there is, um, another, like, scene, um, that was put in for the home video release of this film, where a, um, an electrician guy is, like, in another bucket, well, van, and it comes alive and like rocks him around until he's hanging off the side of the bucket. Then it pushes him into the power line and freaking fries him. And there's some some angles that are like well looking up and you can see the truck's headlight. Well the van's headlight. And it's very clearly an 83. It's very clearly the headlight from an early 80, 80s Econo line. But after it fries the guy to a corpse. We see the trucks, we see the van's, um, headlights shutting off, and it's very clearly the headlight from a 90s era, a carnal line, but this one's just a low-budget Canadian TV movie, so, I don't know, they just worked with what they had, I guess. Now, um, hmm. Jay Brazil's character, um, he didn't do a whole lot, I mean, he kind of becomes friends with, um, with the girl, with, uh, Thad's daughter and the old guy who's a cook. Who, by the way, uh, actually, no, no, um, Jay Rizzo, now, uh, now he, he befriends, um, the girl and the cook. And he, uh, he even, like, gives out plenty of, of theories because he's an old hippie. But unfortunately, uh, he did, doesn't make it through. It kind of sucks because I kind of, I kind of like his character. But uh, considering I'm kind of a hippie myself. But anyway, uh, 
Now, um, now, now I guess the big question is, which one is the better movie? Well, on, on, honestly, that kind of did depend on what you're looking after, well, what you're looking for, because if you want a silly, campy, just flat out ridiculous movie to just, to just toke up and lock your ass off at, uh, maximum overdrive, drive, obviously. But, if you want a killer car movie that is, like, more serious and more faithful to the knob, to, to the short story, and it is more scarier, go with trucks. Now, uh, now, honestly, honestly, I, I prefer maximum overdrive because I just pre- I, because, I mean, it's a bunch of killer semi trucks. Where, where's an all ACDC soundtrack? How can I say no to that? But trucks is a, but trucks is it's a good movie. Well, it's good by Stephen King TV movie television standards, movie standards. But um, but yeah, I mean, um, outside of like being a, a re adaptation of the book, um. This movie doesn't really do a whole lot in terms of, like, well, I mean, if you like killer card movies and you're a fan of Stephen King, really, pick either one. I mean, like, hell, mar marathon it if you want. In fact, um, if, if this movie is, um, on YouTube, I'm gonna include a link in the description down below. And, um... And yeah, that's pretty much all, all I have to say about trucks. So, in the meet, so thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all soon in the near future. Peace.